Hey everybody, I'm a big fan of John Carpenter movies and I wanted to make a tribute to him seeing as how he's in his mid 70s and hasn't directed a new movie in like 13 years at this point. We may not get to see another one. I don't think he's come out and said he's retired from filmmaking, but I could be wrong. In any case, his unique style has had an undeniable impact and influence on genre films. I wanted to make this movie poster that comprised characters and elements from all of his movies spanning from 1974 to 2010. I hope you like it. Give this video a like and subscribe if you do and follow me on Instagram if you feel like it. All right, let's get to working. So I'm not gonna bore you by showing me cutting out every single element. Uh, I'll just show you the first one and it's basically how I did all of them. I just made a rough selection around the subject first and masked away the background, then went in closer and masked away the edges in more detail. Then for the hair, I used the Refine Edge brush tool to get as much of the flyaway hairs as possible, then a hue saturation layer to remove any of the color cast from the background in the hair if that happened. Doesn't always, just if it does. Then for the hairs that didn't get selected, I just painted them back manually with a really small sharp round brush. Lastly, you'll usually need to blur them a little bit with Gaussian blurs so that they match the rest of the picture. I'd go ahead and group those layers together and label them so that when you drag it onto the canvas, you can easily turn it into a smart abject, uh, abject, <laughs> smart object to go back and make changes easier. After doing that for every freaking image, it's time to bring them all into the canvas and work on arranging them in some kind of an interesting way. This part can be pretty daunting, especially with this many images to work with, but I already knew where I wanted a few of the elements, so I at least had a place to start. I knew I wanted the director of all these films to be the largest part of the image, so I brought him in first. And noticed I wanted to remove the glare from his glasses, so I just double clicked on that smart object and worked on removing it. Next, I knew I wanted to put Archie from the 1983 film Christine in the car, and that the car should be near the bottom on the ground. I also went ahead and used levels to darken it down a little since it was so bright. I also knew I wanted Big Trouble in Little China to be front and center because it's easily my favorite Carpenter movie. So I brought in Lopan to be the second largest character in the poster. Then this image of Jack Burton, Gracie Law, and Wang Chi. I also wanted the three storms, thunder, rain, and lightning in there. However, I ended up using a different image for lightning. This was just way cooler, I thought. Fun fact, this character was the main inspiration to the makers of the Mortal Kombat games for the character of Raiden. And it's easy to see how. Next, I brought in the apparitions from the 1980 movie The Fog and used a fog brush to mask the hard edges of the fog so that it looked more foggy. I copy pasted a couple of these guys over to the other side to balance it out a little bit. and use curves to change the color and contrast slightly to vary it up. Okay, from the 1988 movie They Live, I used this iconic image of the politician alien speaking in front of the Obey sign that Nada can only see when wearing the special sunglasses. And also these aliens in front of the Sleep sign at the bank he holds up. Then of course Nada himself. And the only other person who puts the glasses on in the movie, Frank, after a comedically long fight where he's trying to force him to put them on. Try these on. Look, you crazy mother. Put these on. Hey, stay away from me. Five minutes later. Look. Look at them, they're everywhere. I don't know, maybe they can see. For the next movie, 1987's Prince of Darkness, I had a hard time deciding on what to use as it's not one of Carpenter's better known movies. And also, most of the cast of main characters is comprised of actors from some of his other more well-known movies. I ended up going with The Priest, played by Donald Pleasance, who most will know as Dr. Loomis from the Halloween films. I also used the giant vat that they used to capture the devil, and a cross, though I ended up not using that. And in the left corner, Ethan Bishop from 1976's Assault on Precinct 13. And Lee, just cause she was a cool character in that movie. 
I put in a shotgun because that's the main gun Ethan uses, but I found a better image of him holding it that I'll use instead later. The rest of the characters I wasn't totally sure about placement, so I just brought them all in to start figuring it out. We have Snake Plissken from 1981's Escape from New York and 1996's Escape from LA. And in case you were wondering, yes, this is where David Solid Snake Plissken from the Metal Gear franchise got his name, look, and voice from. Michael Myers from Halloween. I admit I have a bit of disdain for this character as we share the same name and I've had to deal with shit from people about it my entire life. In fact, I avoided watching the movies altogether until just in the last few years. I don't like them. Of all the big slasher villains, he's easily my least favorite. However, I do appreciate that the first Halloween movie from 1978 is the granddaddy of all slasher movies that came after it, and that at the time, I'm sure it was very scary. Still, found it boring. Also, Laurie Strode from the same movie. Then John Trent from 1994's In the Mouth of Madness, played by Sam Neill just one year after his big role in Jurassic Park. One of the Thing's forms from 1982's The Thing, as well as McCready. Jack Crow from 1998's Vampires, played by James Woods. Kristen, played by <clears throat> Amber Heard. And what is, as of this date, Carpenter's last film, 2010's The Ward. Starman from the 1984 movie of the same name. I'll be switching this to a different image later. And Lieutenant Who Gives a Shit and this lame creature bad guy from 2001's Ghosts of Mars. I gotta be honest, this is the only one of Carpenter's movies I turned off. I just couldn't get through it. It wasn't even so bad it's good, it was just bad, despite the cast and the director. Maybe I need to give it another chance sometime. Let me know in the comments if you think it's worth watching, maybe with like a group of other people for a laugh. So I spent some time playing around with placement, seeing where things look good. This other image of Snake worked better compositionally, I think. Now after getting Michael in place, I felt the way his head was cocked was throwing off the balance, so I just went in and moved it to the other way a little bit. I also extended where the knife was cut off and used the clone stamp to remove the highlight since I hadn't planned on any light coming from that side of him at this point. Spent some more time arranging things, seeing what the best placement would be for everybody. There's really no secret I can impart to you on how to do this, it's just whatever you think looks good. Everyone's gonna have a different way that they like, I just particularly like the way this drew my eyes around and kept the things I wanted to have in focus, in focus. This is where I found that better picture of Ethan with a shotgun and switched that out. I also realized I'd left out the Invisible Man from 1992's Memoirs of an Invisible Man and added in one of the zombie things from Prince of Darkness here, rather than the cross. We'll put her right there and him right here. Used this image from Starman instead. I was going to maybe use this alien beach ball thing from Dark Star, but it's just not fitting in well. I was kind of on the fence about including something from Body Bags since it's an anthology and Carpenter only directed one segment of it, but he also plays the corner host of all the segments, so I think he should go in. Alright, that's pretty good for all the characters. This will be tweaked a little later, but for now, let's move on to the background. I just wanted it to have a somewhat eerie vibe since most of his movies veer into the supernatural and horror genres and to not be too busy or distracting. I really dug this still image of the lighthouse from the fog and thought it would look good on top of a steep cliff. So after I got that placed, I very meticulously cut out the lighthouse and used levels to darken the cliff and hue saturation to adjust the color to match the lighthouse. 
then used curves to add contrast to the lighthouse. I dropped in some mountains here to balance out with the other side and used levels again to darken them down. Next these clouds, then these stars cause I wanted stars just at the top above the clouds where the dark star spaceship is. So I just masked the stars in up there. Then used huge saturation to make the clouds more purplish to match the stars in the lighthouse and cliff. Lastly for the background where the ship was kind of throwing off the balance, I needed something on the other side. So I dropped in this random planet. It won't be making the cut in the end, but it's here for now. Okay, with everything in place, it's time to start blending it all together. First thing I did was go around and soften the hard crops. And let me make a little adjustment to old body bags here. Then I'm going to open up Camera Raw Filter for each character and use it to bring out details by darkening down highlights and bringing up shadows. This gives it a kind of pseudo HDR effect. For most of the images, it's just cranking up the clarity and texture, turning whites and highlight sliders down, and the blacks and shadows up. While inside Camera Raw, I'll also usually go ahead and turn the exposure up or down if the image needs it to match the rest of the images. Then I'm going to use curves on each character to color match them so they all have the same color tone. In this case I want to match them to the background so I'll make them a kind of blue and purple tone. Did you notice I missed one? Did you, did you see it? Uh, eh? Yeah, right here. McCready, don't worry. I do eventually see it and fix it. Here I filled in behind the characters where you can kind of see through to the background with black. Then went back into the lighthouse smart object and painted back in some of the light. And speaking of painting light, let's turn on Christine. Ooh. I mean the headlights, you dirty bastards. I'll do this using the glow gradient technique. I know I keep saying it, but I will describe this technique in a forthcoming video. Probably it'll be the next video I release. Using a yellowy orange color, I'll paint the inner hotspot glow of the headlights, then the outer glow. Then clip a solid color adjustment to Mr. Mouth of Madness and set it to a linear dodge add. Invert the mask, then start painting where the light would fall on him where he actually sitting in front of the car. Oh, I guess it would make more sense for the highlights on this girl to be on this side where the light is. I'll do the same thing on her and so on for all the characters down here that would get hit by the car's headlights. Notice the bottom of Frank was cut off slightly, so I just extended that. And also his arm was cropped off a bit, so fix that too. Needed to fix the hard shadows here, just clone them out. Now I want to reintroduce shadows back onto everyone. So I just clipped a curves adjustment to each image and darkened it and then painted away the darkness from areas where the highlights were. Uh, missed a few highlights here on the bank counter and the car bumper. Now I finally noticed that McCready wasn't color corrected. D -d -d to add the green glow from the devil vat, I did the same as the headlights. Made a solid color adjustment and put it on linear dodge add. Then copied that adjustment and clipped it to the priest to paint green highlights on him. Same thing for these other characters. I didn't like the highlights in the hair of these two, so I got rid of those by cloning and repainting the hair strands a darker color. 
To balance with the green glow on the left side, I added a yellow glow from the shotgun on the right side. I did all this the same way as before. I removed the highlight in Lee's hair the same way we just did as well. Oops, missed a spot in here when filling in with black behind everyone where you can see some of another character. I made the glows even crazier with these light flare brushes. Then continued on with highlights from the glows. Now I use this red color to add some separation behind low pan. Okay, notice how Snake's gun is held up at waist level, but Michael's knife is aimed down lower and covered by the shotgun blast. I want to fix that. Easy enough, and it looks more balanced now. For the background, I did a little more to blend in the mountains, then add dimension to the lighthouse by darkening with a curves adjustment and painting shadows on one side. and faded the cliff a little. The pews in this image were bugging me, so I went in and used the patch and clone stamp tools to remove them. At this point, I felt like the background was still looking a little blah. I found this cool pink sunset picture and dropped that in and masked away everything except the pink sunset part. There, I think that helps focus the eye and helps pop out the characters a little bit more. I didn't love the stars either. I found a better image of some stars and used it instead. Fits a lot better, I think. Changed the red glow behind low pan to a neon pink color to match the new background. Made the haze over the mountains a more pinkish color to match. Then added separation behind these characters with that same pinkish glow. The highlight on Jack Crow's forehead was bugging me now, so I yeeted it to the realm of the dark gods with my trusty tool of clone stampery and did the same thing to Lieutenant Don't Care. And continued adding shadows to characters. The Ghost of Mars guy's sword was slightly cropped off, so I rebuilt that. More highlights. More shadows. Now white highlights from the moon. I wanted to make the lightning from Raiden here glow and cast light onto the surrounding characters, so let's do that now. Some of this background texture from the fog image is creeping up here and I don't like it. So let's just erase that. And now you can see that a couple of the characters are cropped at the bottom. That's fine, just soften that edge, it's fine. Okay, now for the blue highlights. Having just this little blotch of fog here looks kind of weird, so let's extend it across the whole width of the image. Perfect. It even gave some separation behind these two characters. Now just a little pink light on the lighthouse coming from the sunset. I finally admitted to myself now that the thing coming out of the top of Carpenter's head was just stupid. 
I was hoping it would look less so as things started coming together, but no. So let's move that just here. Now to give this a more illustrative look, I'm gonna put an outline around pretty much everything as well as some pink contouring on some of the faces. It sounds weird, but check it out. Let's add a little more separation here with a white glow. Then continue on with highlighting and contouring. Okay, let's turn up the lights inside the lighthouse. Okay, awesome. Everything's nice and outlined and contoured. This is looking killer. We still need something else behind all the characters so it doesn't just look like a huge head volcano. Carpenter was most prolific in the 80s, and we've definitely got an 80s neon color scheme going on here, so let's go with it. I first added some more haze behind everybody to separate them from the background. Then threw in a pink circle back there just to kind of see how it looked, and damn, yeah, that looks badass. I played around with it a little bit, trying different things before just keeping it simple. Get that planet out of here. Ooh yeah, it's coming together now. Let me contrast this green haze with a pink outline here. Yep, 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 that looks great. As I want to do, I want to make all of these things eyes glow, not just the leader guy. All right, now a little color grading with a custom action. Whoop, can't forget to do a little dodging and burning to add some more dimension. This shadow on Snake's arm doesn't make sense. Let's just clone that away. And continue dodging and burning. Need to get rid of this harsh shadow under Frank's sunglasses. Again, they don't make any sense in this composition. And just finish up dodging and burning. Some more color grading with curves and custom LUTs. Then bring the whole thing into camera raw and HDR it up a little further. And just some color sliders. Now that's looking like a proper illustration, almost. We'll complete that look in a second. First, I wanted to see what this would look like with a border and a title like a real movie poster. I like it. For the title, I use the Halloween movie font as that's probably Carpenter's most famous and well-known movie. Looks pretty retro, I'm into it. Okay, let's complete the illustrated look by smudge painting the whole thing. This took a long time to do, and I'll cover how I do this in plenty of detail in my next video. So let's hyperlapse through this. Alrighty, just need to add a bit of sharpening to that and just a few finishing touches. And done. 